Good morning. Today is January 24th, 2020. The time is a few minutes after 10. We've paused a little bit today. Usually I will try to begin right at 10 o'clock. Uh, first day of class is always a zoo. It never changes, but your other classes work also. Mine will be no different today. Um, so, you know, we just uh, get over it. Uh, let's see, this is ITSC 2309, Database Programming. My name is Dr. Smith, and I've been teaching this class for a long time, well, since before we had SQL Server, and when we had um, other databases, Oracle and others. Um, let's see, somebody who's going to be here regularly needs to have a job, and your job, is checking to make sure that this little red button right there, see it right there, recording, is showing. Do you see that little red button? Somebody check, and if you can't see that little red button, uh, it means that I forgot to turn on the recorder. Uh, so this means that this class is recorded and it will be posted on well, it's posted up to YouTube and then linked from Canvas. So if you miss a class or just decide you want to sleep in, uh, you can get the uh, you can get the lecture online. Okay, lots of people uh, take this class. The online class tends to fill up first, and so people will sign up for this class and then take it online. And that's fine. You can do that. Um, so it's, a, it's the same assignments, the same due dates, the same requirements. You are required to uh, view the videos, at attend to the video. You may attend from home. And if you do, I will see, I don't see any participants. I'm the only one here, but if you are at home, I will, and you log in to this, um, Here's, here's the meeting ID that you will use when it says join, you say join a class, you join with that meeting ID, and now you are connected. If you have a headset, uh, then you will be able to hear me and talk. So I recommend a headset. Uh, this one is a good one. Um, you, get, you can get one with a USB on it a lot cheaper than a, um, wireless. You don't really need the wireless. You just plug in the USB because you're not walking around. Uh, let's see, what else? So I recommend that if you're going to telecommute, which you can. You can participate in the class. You can ask questions. You can um, anything. And I can, I'll be able to help you out with, uh, I can see your screen. You can see mine and all that. So for example, if you were at home, um, unless, unless I have a camera and I don't believe I have one in here, so you won't get to see my beautiful face, but then you didn't want to see that anyway. That's why you stayed home. Um, okay. This class to get to the syllabus of this class, it's, uh, right here, of course, syllabus. And if you download it, looks like I got two of them, but that's okay. Um, starts off, the real course syllabus is here. This is where I tried to put it all into one page. Uh, one, one page. So what you need in one page, I do not initiate drops, okay? If you, if you haven't done the paperwork and dropped, you you're not dropped. Um, if you decide to stop attending, you stop attending, but that doesn't drop you from the class. So if that matters to you, um, Sometimes there's a greater cost. It used to be that if you dropped a class, you just, it just didn't count. And they changed that about seven or eight years ago to where you can only have so many drops in your entire undergraduate career. Um, so, and that has um, financial aid implications, sometimes worse than making an F. Uh, important dates, exercises have due dates. They're soft. The due date is the day that you should should have it in by. It will typically be one Friday after I make the assignment. I'll try to make the assignments on Friday. The due date will be the following Friday, okay? That's a soft date. That date, if you go past that date, oh, shame on you, but hey, 
there's no penalty for it. Uh, one week after that is the cutoff. Okay, so it's not so much a penalty. It's that I, at some point I have to know I've got them in and I can grade them. Okay, if some of them are giving us a lot of trouble, I might push that cutoff date back, but the, the it'll be two weeks after it's assigned. It is a cutoff, and sometimes I will um, turn it back on, turn them back on towards the end of class, and let you turn some stuff in. Uh, what I find is people aren't just aren't doing anything and then they go all semester and then boom I get them all blam the last day of class. <laughs> that drives me nuts because now I have to sit down and do all of that grading and I try to keep it caught up and you know I'm grading stuff from chapter two or module two you know eight, ten, twelve weeks after it was due. People have just been sitting on it. Um, so assignments are usually cut off two weeks as I have two weeks past the due date or okay two weeks past the due date then. So I'll give you I, I'll make it the due date. Due date will be one week. I'll try to get it graded before the cutoff date meaning that if there's a problem and if there's a problem and I want it reworked I'll get put a zero on it. That means I want you to fix something about it. Okay, I have to put a grade. So don't say, oh, you gave me a zero. Why can't I get partial? Yes, I'll give you partial credit if you don't do it. But I mean, what I'm trying to do is say, do it, turn it in. So I'm trying to get it graded and back to you such that you have time to get to redo it if you have to and turn it in so that we can do it. I typically don't take redos on things that you should have seen. So if it's something that I've covered and covered and covered and you're still doing it, um, sorry. Okay, here's an important one. Spring census date. Spring census date is February 3rd, 2020. Uh, by 10 o'clock on this date, I must have the first assignment. Um, module one, page eight, syllabus quiz. It has one question on it. Have you received the syllabus? Yes, no. Correct answer is yes, but if, if you answer no, it still works. You just have to turn in something. If you've turned it in, you made a zero, but you turned it in. Um, and that means you're in the class. If you don't turn in anything by that census date, even something as simple as just checking, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you check that box that says, I have read the uh, instruction or the, uh, the, the terms of use or whatever. Okay, that's you got to check that. If you don't check it, you don't get any further in a most um, in software installs. But here, what happens is that the um, if I if I haven't gotten something and certified that you're here, then the financial aid people kick you out of your financial aid for this class, and they will, and there won't be anything I can do about it. Okay, so. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it it does meet in this class sometimes. Are you sure you have the right day? Uh, yeah, check. Um, they may have moved it. It, it that happens sometimes. Um, Anyway, spring census date. Don't miss that one. Do it right now. Do it before you before you leave this class. Before you leave this room, go in there and click yes, even if it's a lie, and um, turn it in. Last day to withdraw is March twentieth. Mm -hmm. My Canvas gradebook is set such that it does not count late assignments as zero. Um, so they're just not counted. So as, as, as you're looking at your grades, so remember that if it's not there, it would be a zero. Um, I record my lectures. If you don't have an account, you should get one. They're free. Go to uh, zoom.us, and it's there. It's uh, it's not a um, it's not hard on your computer. It's a real nice one. It's I think it's a lot better than Skype. It's a lower bandwidth. I don't know how the, what the quality of the com conversation is, but you can usually hear everybody. 
check the assignments daily. This is our textbook, um, SQL Server 2016 for developers. You can get that at, on a uh, semester rental. If you go to the, um, did I put the, the publisher is, well, there's the publisher, uh, Marouche. I guess I didn't put the URL. Anyway, if you look it up there, uh, the you can you can find the publisher, and they it's a not a bad price. Uh, you know, heck, some of these computer science textbooks cost two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, <laughs> and well, that's one of the reasons I chose this one is because it's not an expensive textbook. Um, it's not optional though. I'm going to follow it pretty closely. And the stuff that we do will come directly out of that textbook. So I don't like being stuck to a textbook, but on this class, I follow it fairly closely. I say fairly closely. I'll tell you when I don't. Um, I'm not permitted to touch your personal computer. Um, classes meet one day a week. The final will be what time is the final? Uh, Friday, May 15th during the regular class time. Please don't miss the final. That really makes me soggy and hard to light. Um, oh, I missed the final, what can I do? Oh no, that means I have to enter an I for you and then we have to go through a whole lot of hassle. The rest of this stuff is the boilerplate. Um, yeah, you can read it, it's got a schedule in there. But that's, uh, that first page is the big stuff, okay? Okay, modules, where you'll probably be interested in mostly. Uh, first is the orientation, um, welcome to the course. Okay. Supposed to be a welcome letter in there. There's a welcome, you've been welcomed. Um, that's required. Then, Tavetha content. You'll not learn about the content, about me. Um, I've been in this racket for a long time. My hobby is building um, tandem two-seat bicycles. My wife is handicapped. Uh, therefore, she can't ride by herself. So we both enjoy riding. Therefore, she rides the tandem. We own three of them. I don't know why I have three. Can't ride three of them. Uh, what else is important? There's the textbook. Okay, this one right here, module one, page eight, syllabus quiz. Do it now. February 3rd. Have you received, read, and understood the syllabus? If you have questions, have these been addressed? I think the correct answer is yes. Answer something and submit. Do it now. You can always go back and take it later, retake it and make a higher grade. I mean, you know, I'm trying to make it easy. Get something in. I want to be able to see, go to my grade book and say, yes, bingo, 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 bingo. Everybody turns something in. Um, which is the purpose of this whole thing here. Uh, there was another one that I had, I think it was Dropbox practice. And I believe I had a, a stale date in it um, that said it was due and it was available until sometime next last semester. I fixed that. I don't know about the rest of the um, okay, submit the quiz. Okay. Um, okay, one other thing about the modules. Uh, we will be going through the modules pretty much in order um, until we get down towards the towards the last of them. Usually we'll close them down some before we'll go through these in order, five in order, six will be in, in order. We'll have a test one. I guess I better unpublish that. Um, Let's 
subqueries, data manipulation, data types, functions, and then they might not come. Okay, let's go down to the very last one, the very uh, recorded lectures. Guess what you find under recorded lectures, the very last module. Recorded lectures. That's where you'd go to see, see the lecture. And uh, you are responsible for uh, getting the lecture and doing it. I sometimes, uh, lots of times I don't record. If I'm, if I'm just chatting with students, I'll usually turn the recorder off so you don't have to sit there and listen to a bunch of nonsense. Um, Questions? All of my tests will have a practice test. Um, with them and I give you the solutions to the practice test. People who take the practice test will typically do better on the, on the test. Okay, questions on the syllabus. So now you should be able to answer that question. Yes, I have received the syllabus, yes. All the exams online or? Um, I will tell you what they are. Most of the time I do give them online. Sometimes students request to take it uh, in class. Um, usually I'll recover that if all the, if all the students are uh, online, I will recover that time and use it to go on. So I'll usually try to give you enough time on the, um, if, if it's an online test, I believe they will be, um, you will have enough time to where it will span a weekend and a couple of days on both sides. Does that hit anybody's work time? I mean, does your work time occlude that? Such that I hope it's you to give you enough time to get it. There, the, the test due date is a hard date because I have to get them all in before I can grade them. So I can't grade tests if they're trickling in. <laughs> oh, it's really a pain, okay. Let's go to uh, installing the server software. Your, the server software is already installed on your, on your uh, PC. Where is it on here? This PC, well, I thought I said to put it on the desktop. Documents, it's not in Zoom. Downloads, not there. Okay. Local disk. Okay, I don't know where the, my, uh, do you guys have, um, if you go to your start menu and you scroll down to, I believe it's under Microsoft SQL Server. Do you have that showing in your, where? Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, you'll download this SQL Server um, 2017, and basically these are the two files you need. You'll get a third file in here that is basically just a, 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 a downloader, so that you can de uh, delete that. Um, now this must be the downloader because it's not big enough, it's only half gig. So I'll execute this guy, execute, SQL server, expr, 
Express Edition. So this is the Express Edition. It is a free edition. You don't have to pay any money to use it. If you read the um, agreement, you're saying you're not going to use it for commercial purposes. Okay. So you need to go get the full version. It, this is a full version. It limits how big your tables can be. We're going to take the basic. You can select download media if you want to. By the way, you don't have to do this here. This is what you will do at home. Um, we have to agree. And it'll download the install package. So this is the third file we're going to get. Uh, if you'd selected download media, you would have gotten this install package. And so basically, I'm just going to let this guy run. Um, and we will then we'll configure him later. So when I get to the configuration, you will um, you'll go along with me on, on your computer. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about SQL in general. SQL is an ancient language. SQL has been around since the 1960s. God, I've been around that long. Um, but as, compu as computer programs go, computer programming languages, uh, it is considered a geriatric language, meaning it, it just, it's just, uh, it's, uh, developed, of course, in over the years and changed, but by and large, it's one of the oldest ones that is still in uh, use. COBOL, I guess, would be about the same age, but COBOL isn't used anymore. Fortran, dead as a dodo bird, but SQL is still around and it's still in use. SQL is kind of the universal language of database. I say universal. It's supposed to be the universal language, but there is no such thing as a universal language because they change and they, uh, uh, they, they evolve and they develop dialects. Uh, so it's like the English spoken here, what we call English and what they call English in the Caribbean, the two would not sound the same to the, the, the speakers. They're, they're both English. English spoken in the United Kingdom is going to be different from the English we speak. So the same thing is true of SQL. If in theory, I'm supposed to be able to pick up a, a program in SQL and just take it over and drop it into Oracle and run it. And for the most part, that's true, but it is not always true. It's, it's not universally true. I'm going to try in this class to focus on pure SQL. I'm going to try to focus on that part of SQL that is the nut of it, the bone of it, so to speak. And where I cannot, where I have to have some variation in that, I'm going to, um, I'll tell you that, that this isn't SQL. SQL is kind of strange because you're used to lang programming languages. How many of you have had programming before some language? most of us and that would probably be c c c c no java mm -hmm. and others others python okay um and what do they do those languages they everything executes in order the first the first line then the next line then the next line then the next line some of them are compiled some of them are interpreted a lot there they can be different there, there's different, um, by the way, I've finished downloading, I'm now installing up there. Um, so as uh, they execute in order, the sequence. The other thing is you can do if then else and you can branch and break that sequence. If it's true, do one thing. If it's false, do another thing. And what else can you, so that's called uh, selection. And the other thing you can do is iteration, do the same thing over and 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 sometimes forever again. Um, okay, so you're used to seeing that kind of stuff. You're used to assigning a variable. So you say X gets 53 and you expect that variable X to be 53 later when you go back and look at it. And if it isn't and you didn't change it, why? Um, SQL, all that goes out the window. SQL, you don't have any 
uh, step by step way that you go from here to there. And SQL is truly an artificial intelligence language where what you do is you specify what the answer is that you want. I want uh, to know all of the zip codes that are in Plano, Texas. Okay. You don't tell it how to get them. You say select zip code from my data where city is, is equal to Plano. And okay, it's now it goes and figures it out. And you don't know, well, you have a way of finding out how it will do it, but there's lots of ways it can do it. Obviously, there has to be a loop running in there somewhere. So um, when that, if that changes and I don't catch it, somebody alert me to it. Um, but you specify what you want the answer to look like and the computer programs itself to get it for you. There aren't any, in SQL proper, there aren't any variables. There aren't any if then else. There's no while loop, okay? It's just everything is computed that you need right just in time, it computes it, gives you the answer, it goes back to sleep. Okay. Now, every SQL implementation, including SQL Server, has wrapped around it a programming language that gives you variables and it gives you if then else and it gives you looping because they're really handy to have. Um, but that's next semester's class. So I don't want to start, uh, everybody yells at me if I start talking too much about the advanced programming class before we finish this one. So, but I always put in a plug for the advanced programming coming up next semester after summer, not, not, not in the summer session, um, for those of you who want to take it. And I'll be saying a little bit more about it. Oh, look what I got. Okay. Um, well, gee, that was easy. You might make a um, note of this page. Um, it, it would be the same for your machine, but on yours at home, this is some things in here that will be nice to know. So it might be nice to open a notepad and copy these, uh, the connection string Copy the connection, that's the connection chain, it's not so much. The sir, uh, um, install log folder, the media folder, wh where your stuff is actually installed, and the resources folder. I don't know that you'll need them. Uh, I won't ask you for them on a test or anything like that, but it, it's handy, those are handy things to keep. Okay, and I'm going to say connect now. No. Okay. Close. Yes, I, I, I'm not going to say connect now. Now let me see if I'm if I have it. Microsoft SQL Server 2017 is there. Okay. Now this. Uh, for the most part, the rest of the stuff, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do something else. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna go to my, um, my start. Windows Administrative Tools. Services. Windows Administrative Tools Services. I would recommend that you put a shortcut to this down on your startup bar. You're gonna be checking this one fairly frequently. Under Services, I need to check under SQL Server, so down to the S's. SQ, SQL Server, SQL Server, SQL Express. Not here, but at home. Notice that it is running. What is its startup type? Right next to it there. Startup type, see? 
See, it's running. Startup type is automatic. Okay, that means when you turn on the computer, it starts. Don't worry about the rest of these. Don't worry about the agent, disable, disable. It, they, they start themselves, okay? But this one is, this SQL server is our engine. It's our SQL server engine. Oops. We have a joke about SQL in general. How much memory and processor of your memory and processor, what percent of your memory and processor does the SQL need? The answer, it's a joke. All of it, all of it. Bottom line, if I'm not using the darn thing, I don't want it running because it drinks my battery, it drinks my memory, it uses up um, processor, slows everything down. So if I'm not using it, I don't want it running. Now here, it's all we do with it. We come in, we turn on the computer, that's what we're gonna do, right? So there's no, but it's a little bit like if you've got your car sitting in your driveway, when you, when you get out of your car, when you get home this afternoon, you get out, you're gonna turn your car off. First place the law says you have to. And, but even if it didn't, you wouldn't leave it running just so you wouldn't have to turn it on in the morning. Why? Because it's gonna take gasoline to sit there and run all night. So we're gonna turn that thing off the bottom line. This guy, automatic double click him, startup type, manual, at home, not here. Here we'll leave it automatic. Here we can leave it automatic. At home, you, uh, you set yours to manual. That's how I set mine at home, manual. If your system is hiccuping and it's not running correctly, go check and make sure you've turned that guy on because you'll have to start him um, so, for example, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change him to manual. Now, I'm finished with my computer. I'm going to go and surf the web. I, I saw I changed it to manual. There, manual. I'm going to go surf the web, whatever. So, I go over here and I say stop. That's why I say you'll be using this a lot at home. So you need to have a, put a, a hot button to get you there. He has stopped, okay. I'm not running. So before I can use my SQL, before I can run any queries, I have to double click him and say start. That's at home. Here, turn your computer on, he's running. So I'm gonna set mine back to automatic for here. and I'm running under automatic as I should be. Okay, so you'll be using this one at home more because when you come on to, and if you forget to start it, okay. It's kind of like getting in your car and trying to put it in gear and back out of your driveway and you forget to start your engine. Well, you're not gonna get very far. Um, okay, next one. So we're all, that, that's all installed. That was easy. I'm gonna to go to what, this PC, was that, that was on the C drive, I believe. Okay, next one is SSMS, um, SQL Server Management Studio. Now SQL Server is a little, SQL Server is the big brother of access. Some of you may have taken the um, ITSW 1307 class, with uh, maybe perhaps Dr. Cervantes, anybody? Okay, not that, that that's not gonna help you a whole lot, but it gives you some ideas about, um, I don't care for that book, they, they do some things in that book that I don't like, it's a software class. So the job of, of ITSW, SW means software, so it's to teach you a particular software package. It is not this class's job to teach you SQL Server. This is about SQL, not about SQL Server. We could teach it just as well in Oracle or MySQL, any of them. We just chose this one because this is the one that my coworkers want. And since I'm an adjunct, I'm retired, by the way, from Texas A&M. And so retired 
teachers don't count much. Our opinions don't matter a whole lot because they all got their own opinions. It's okay, I don't have to go to faculty meetings. Okay, so, uh, but in, S in Access, you, everything was in one nice little package. Well, an SQL Server is Access's big brother, but now they've split it out and now you have the database engine and you have the, um, the graphical user interface. There's also a command line interface, by the way. But um, the graphical user interface, we're gonna be using it here because it makes our life a little bit easier, but this is not a class about the graphical user interface. And so I'm considering moving to the command line, but it should, you know, hey, it's nice. I'll give up my graphical user interface when they pry it from my cold dead fingers, but uh, this isn't about that. Okay, anyway, we go to the SSMS. Now these two files are the ones you downloaded. Go to that next file, SSMS, double click him. No, oh, no, not here. You guys um, have already installed it. Um, uh, when we get to the configuration part here. Okay, um, where do you wanna put it? I recommend you just leave it there and I'm just gonna hit install. This is release 18.4, by the way, if you have an older version, it will work. Uh, the question is how much older of a version? Um, Generally speaking, anything that's after 2012 will probably work. If you have Windows 7, any Windows 7 users? Good. If you have Windows 7, you must use SQL 2012 32-bit. But... Okay. Questions, I'm gonna let this thing run. And if there's any questions, do I have anybody online? Yes, who's online? Hello, Chris Palmer, can you hear me? Um, I don't see that you have a... That's okay, I don't think you're, you have a mic. By the way, if you are at home and you're listening and you want to ask a question, there is a chat tool under uh, Zoom. I don't know how to tell you how to use it, but you can send a chat message that, hey, I can't hear you or something. Um, And let's see, I still have the... Okay, other questions? I'm gonna pause the recording a minute so that I don't... Um... Okay, I see somebody has sent a chat. Yes, he can hear me. Okay, okay, Chris, thank you for demonstrating the chat. Um, usually what you say at home, um, I will many times have it on the speaker. This might be something that you need to know. You can mute your microphone. If you mute it, you turn it off and mommy, you know, that stuff. It's good if you do that. But just remember that if you turn it on, everybody in the room will hear you. The same thing is true with your video. Most most students turn their video off. Otherwise, everybody else will, everybody that's on will see you. Which, okay, I'm gonna pause the recording. Okay, I've resumed the recording. Thank you for reminding me. And I'm gonna to go to my start menu now and scroll down to Microsoft. And I see now that I have Microsoft SQL Server Tools. Do you see that one? Okay, under Microsoft's Tools, 
Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio 18. You might want to make a shortcut to that, stick it on your desktop, because that's going to be our main uh, interface. Okay, you should be going along with me now. Are you watching me now? And it's always a little slower the first time. It takes it a long time the first time you started on a new computer because I guess it loads a whole bunch of stuff into memory. Um, after this, it'll, it'll start a lot more quickly. I will try always to take a break at the one hour point or 50 minute point. 50 minutes about as long as I can sit still. Um, okay, there we go. And here we're cooking now. Okay. Oh, here is the point where you'll find out if your uh, database is running. I'm assuming that yours is all running. Yours is not running. Okay. Did you check your uh, services? Is that how you know it's not running? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your your uh, management studio may be a little slow coming up. Well, that happens. Okay. At this point in the in the process, anyway, when yours finally gets up, you will find out if your database engine is running. Um, since I can see its name right here, your name may vary. Okay. Okay. Let me come around and take a peek and see what we're looking at here. Got a blank. I don't know. Let's browse for more. Let's go down the well further. That's it. That looks right. So, uh, yeah, if you don't have a database engine, say browse for more. Doing okay? You're still waking up? Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, if you're faster than that, um, Okay, I'm gonna go ahead anyway, and as, as you get to this point, just wait for me here. Um, the authentication, under authentication, we have, there's two ways to log in to an SQL server. We have Windows authentication, which is the default, and then we have SQL server authentication, which is not considered to be as secure. Under SQL Server authentication, I have a username and a password, and I use my username and password to log in from Bolivia or wherever I happen to be. Um, so I can log in across the, the TCP IP connection. I can log in from, so my, my server management studio can be running any place, and I can log into this database or that database or one over there in uh, Bulgaria. Okay, so if I have Windows authentication, that means I have to be logged into Windows on this machine. Yes, I can be remotely logged into Windows. Yes, I'm aware of that. But the idea, I can, I can also block that out. So what I'm doing when I say Windows authentication, I'm making sure that your tush is in, the in front of that machine. And I can lock that room up and nobody can log into that, to that server unless you're here. When you use Windows authentication, you log in as the administrator. So Windows authentication is the administrative login. You jealously guard that Windows password. So the Windows user, the guy that installed that Windows, which is your user on Windows, is also the administrator of the database. 
Um, question, is everybody to this point? No. Where are we? You didn't have it, oh. Oh, well, you're on computer. Yeah. You're on your own. Let that download. Okay. Uh, don't download this server. You don't need to download anything. Close it. If you want something to, to, the, to the computer, stop. It should already be there. Okay. So so you started, so this guy is starting. When did you start him? I was just like, Okay. Um. Let me abort this one. So you know how to, do you know how to stop a process under the task manager? Do a restart. Okay. When you come up, don't install anything because they're already installed. On their own. That's okay. Your own computer you can install on it. These are already installed. Okay. Everybody to this point. And I'll get you there after. Okay. Are you in? Are you following? On I'd like to, even if you have your own computer, it's okay, but I would like to get all of these configured. So right now we're gonna be configuring them. Okay, so the idea is if I log in with Windows authentication, it's not gonna ask me for a password. I've already put in my password to get into Windows, assume. And so when I say connect, he's just going to connect. So here is where, if it doesn't connect, if I get an error message here, it's probably because my SQL server is not running. Did you connect? Okay, I am now the SQL server administrator. I got the power, man. All right, so from here, I'm gonna do several things. The first thing I want to do is go to the server. So right at the very top level of this thing. So I've collapsed that, so you don't have to collapse it, but I'm gonna right click this very top. This is the, the server, right click the server, right? Don't come down here and right click databases. I want you to right click up here where it says SC, SCI 122 SQL Express and stuff like that. Okay, right click, and I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to security. I'm gonna pause there. Does anyone need any help right now? Okay. Okay, I see a lot of hands being raised. Uh, what, what did, what's going, what's wrong? You didn't get what? Okay. 
let's no uh let's let's uh let's figure out why okay if you did not get a connect you're going to go to your windows uh administrative tools go down to your services scroll down to sql server microsoft sql server no, it's, it's, it's under SQL Server, isn't it? SQL Server, SQL Express. Are you running? Yes? But you still didn't get a connect. Okay. Well, I need to come back and figure out why. That's okay. I, usually, I have to go figure out why. So you stopped your server and now your server is running. Let's see, you can say, we say connect. Browse for more, see if you got any extras. I think I'm gonna have to see it over here before I'm gonna, okay. Looks like you are connected. Anything else connecting? Okay. Okay. This one, if you don't, if if you're not getting a connection, cancel. So browse for more. Database engine. See yours. The the names won't always be the same. Connect. I believe that that will connect. After this, it should connect automatically to that one. Next one. Okay. Okay. Um, if let me let me do this up here. Let me go ahead and put this up on the board. Um, if you're running and every and you know you're running. <clears throat> disconnect you say connect and you know that you and and you're you're freezing up right here your name may not be the same as mine i think a lot of you are copying this name just drop your window down and say browse for more click database engine and the one that pops up there will be the correct name When you say connect, that should connect. Did that work? Okay, lights on. Looking for any other troubles. Okay, we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a bathroom break in just a minute, I promise. I, I used to have a professor at A&M, that guy would, he, he, 10 minutes into his lecture. And I'd like to conclude with one or two more remarks. And you knew that, so, well, he wasn't gonna shut up for another two hours, what are you talking about? And I just, uh, well, I'll leave you with this final thought. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm gonna right click the server. The server is the one at the top. So when I say the server, rest of these are properties of the server, databases, security, server objects, and that sort of stuff. I'm gonna go to the server. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to security. Hey, look what we got there. Right at the very top, server authentication. Now, you have to set this one. If you don't set this one, you won't be able to get back. You won't be able to, it won't work for you because this one is what locks it into Windows authentication. The only way that you can use this server is sitting at the server. You cannot log into this server with a username and a password. You must be the Windows user for this server the way it is now. We're gonna change it such that you have a user and a password. That means that I have to change this authentication mode to SQL Server and Windows. The nice thing about this is that I don't have to worry about remembering the, the administrative password. The administrative password is Windows. Now, if you're coming in remotely, 
you will have to need you also have an administrative password but uh, that's the that's the downside to this so if um, um, if I forget my password that's okay I can fix my password I just log in with Windows authentication and I change my password however I want to change it okay so now I've changed it to SQL servers and window authentication it says okay now it says some of your will not take effect at some of these changes until SQL server is restarted you're gonna say okay that means that we're going to restart the server the server not the computer we're not going to restart the computer we're going to restart SQL oh okay I'm going to right click the server again the server the one at the top and I'm going to pull down to guess what restart now please stop me if you're getting behind because restart the server will go down the server will come back up we don't have to restart the computer did yours come up okay Are you sure you want, well, I wouldn't have told you to do it if I wasn't sure. Let me see what we've got. What's that? Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll, take, we'll take a bathroom break in just a second. I'll get you caught up. Now, my my servers but now i am in a mode where i can start as where i can log in as a user now i want you to think of a username what do you want your username to be i don't know it's usually your first initial and your last name maybe you got a nickname you like to use i use sw smith uh, we can't all be sw smith i mean Oh, I guess you could. I don't care what your username is. I don't care what your password is, but your password has to be a valid password, meaning how many letters does it have to have? Eight. And it has to have what in there? One, at least one. Let lowercase letter, at least one. At least one number. At least one special character like a dollar sign asterisk something like that three out of four of those okay uh, think of a password that you like okay now when we get finished with this we're going to take a take a break i'm going to go down to security open up security go down to logins now i can just double click logins if i want to those are the built-in logins. If I double click, excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna right click logins. Right click logins and go to new login. Now, I want you to click before we do anything, make this be SQL server authentication. If you don't make it be SQL server, it won't give you the password option. What is your login name? Well, you thought of your login name because my students always do what I tell them to do, right? I told you to think of a login name, so you did. It can't have spaces in it, the usual stuff that you would expect. Uh, it is not case sensitive. Now, your password. Your password again. Now, I want you to um, pay, pay attention here. Enforce password policy will remain checked. Enforce password expiration. Uncheck that, otherwise it's going to make you change your password as soon as you log in, and it will expire somewhere about the middle of the class, and they'll make you change it again. Okay. We will leave, for the time being, the default database will be left master. And so we've done everything we need to do at this time. We have a login name. 
your login name will probably be different from mine. I will say whenever I say SW Smith, I mean your login name. Okay, whatever you chose. Password is your password. And I'm gonna say okay. And I think it's just about break time. So I am going to pause the recording. And we're gonna take a short break. Uh, usually take 10 minutes. Pause rec Resuming recording. Um, I was gonna say a couple of things I want to bring up. One, and I usually cover this before this before here. If you have a mistake, do not reinstall SQL Server. Uh, you will end up with two two of them installed. Um, if you hose it so badly, you just have to do something with it. Go into your control panel. <clears throat> so I'll just I'll demonstrate it. Don't do this, but if you have to do this, go to the control. Control panel. Under the control panel, you will find um, add and remove programs. What is it? Is it under programs? Programs and features. Is that it here? Uninstall. Okay. Programs and features. Go there. It might change. And every place that you see Microsoft SQL Server, so SQL Server, just uh, all of these, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, just go in order down through there and uninstall them. Some of them, you, some of them will say, well, you have to uninstall this other one first. That's fine, just skip it and go on to the other one. Then come back and check and make sure you've gotten them all. When you've gotten them all, now you can reinstall. Uh, that's the way you take it out. So I would have um, one, two, three, four, five <clears throat> to uninstall. Probably wouldn't have to uninstall the management studio, but that's the way you you do it. When you if uh, when you're done and you want to you know upgrade to a different version, uninstall the other one. Okay, where are we now? If you were to do, go to your uh, security logins, look at your logins, you should see your password or your, your user there. Uh, mine is SW Smith, whatever yours is. I suggest, excuse me, I suggest that you make yours at home be the same as it is at school. Um, you very likely will be coming in using your laptop here, but even if you don't, uh, you can carry the stuff back and forth. Um, you'll need a, a flash drive because all that your programs are will be little, very relatively small text files. Um, so you can take it home and run it and anything you work on here will go home with you too um, on your flash drive. So I've got my um, user. If I forget my user's password, I can open him up with a double click. Don't worry about it that it looks like it's longer than you made it. That's to confuse hackers. They won't, they don't want to show how long your password is. Um, but if you change it, it's changed here. Um, okay. Are we there? Lights on. Groovy. Okay, next thing we're going to do is create a database. Uh, when I told you to create your user, I say name your user, whatever floats your boat. Um, <clears throat> databases, I want you to name your database correctly because if you don't name your database correctly, I will not be able to run your program. And if I can't run your program, get a zero, I mean, of course. No, I want to be able to run your program. So name your databases correctly. We're going to create two databases. Please make a note of the names and do it the same way at home. Under databases, right-click database, new database. Okay, the database name. I want you to make your first database named Scratch S. C R A T C H, like scratch paper. When you're doing math and you need some paper to write on and do some calculations, it's scratch paper underscore DB 
to show it is a database. Scratch underscore db. Check your spelling. Make sure yours looks just like mine. Assuming I spelled it correctly. If I didn't, then scratch, 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 scratch paper database. Okay, the owner. Who do you think the owner is? Is yours owned by S.W. Smith? It's your, oh, that's the user you just created. Your user, okay? When we get to the next class, we're gonna have several users. For right now, it's just one. We're only gonna have one user. Makes life simple. Scratch is owned by S.W. Smith. The rest of the stuff, you might take a look at the, the rest of this stuff. It is important, this tells you where, by the way, the path tells you where the files are. Your program has to, uses the file system. So database uses the file system. We think it's a table. It really isn't, that it's really not divided into tables. It's, it's in files. And this is where the files are for this guy. And I have a way to put certain tables on one disk and other tables on other disks to balance out my load later on. For right now, where these guys are is important. Okay, now they're always in the same place. They're always in program files, Microsoft SQL Server, SQL 14 Express, MS SQL, data, and then the file name um, will be in there. And when I get that, when I get this, the name and the owner, I'm gonna say, okay. There he is. Name him correctly. Okay. One more time. Databases. I'm going to uh, click him again. New database one more time. This one will be named AP underscore DB. In general, a uh, database is not case sensitive. It is not case sensitive. Uh, it will be kept case sensitively, but I'm not going to enforce case sensitivity on it, but keep it named like that anyway. AP is accounts payable. This is our production database. This is the database that we will be using for our assignments and stuff. Okay, AP. As soon as we get done making messes on Scratch. Scratch is the place where you get to go make a mess. AP, we want to keep reasonably pristine, unless we feel like messing it up. Oh, okay, so AP is accounts payable. This is our working database. Now, I uh, will tell you which database to use. So if I say, you know, use Scratch database to make, make tables, it'll say so right in the, in the assignment, use your Scratch database. This one says use AP, then use the AP database. You got two of them, name them the same. You see, if you don't name yours correctly, if you name it PA, then when I try to run your code, it won't find that database. So, uh, and, it'll go, and then I'll have to go mess with your code and I'll go mess with your grade, I'll get even. Um, and then I say, okay, once I've done that. Oops, I said owner is default, well, Okay, I, I goofed it up, sorry. I'm gonna go to my properties, go back to it. The owner is SW. Forgot to set my owner correctly. Okay, um, I'll fix that in a minute. Okay, I have two databases, AP, DB, Scratch DB. Both of them are owned by SW Smith or your username. One more thing. Well, a couple more things. And I'll leave you with this final word. We're gonna go back again. We're gonna go back to security. 
We're going to go back to logins. We've been here before. I want to go to SW Smith login or your your log your username login. You can either double click or you can right click and select properties. Go to master. Go go to the default database. This is the database when you come into the system. When you log in, you have to have a place to go. It says where wherever this is your database. So this is where you will land. So, so you log in, you say connect to my database with your username and your password. This is the database that will be automatically logged unless you change it. So I'm going to, when I land in here, I want that to be the Scratch database, Scratch DB. And I say, okay. Now I'm pretty much ready to go. Okay. Questions? Let's see, I need to get to... I think I can change it here, I've got my goofed up my owner. Hmm, it's not letting me change it. I'll, I'll, I'll have to change it later. Okay. We're now configured. Okay, let's see, what did we do? First we <clears throat> created our, first we set the, um, we set the, the authentication mode to Windows and uh, SQL Server. Then we created a user of your choice, you named him or her. We gave that person a password, a valid password of at least eight characters and that met the criteria. Um, then we went over and we created a database named scratch underscore DB. And we created another database named AP underscore DB. Okay. Um, and I wasn't very careful. And so I, made my database owner the I have the wrong owner in my APDB database because I was careless. And we have a saying about database. Database has the undo capability of an M16. Um, it is not a very friendly place to work. It is also a very valuable um, thing to have. I'm going to show you how to fix a database that right away when you've made a mistake on it, an AP database is um, a problem because I've named it wrong. I have to, I have to disconnect. So I'm going to disconnect. Now I have two. One of them is a plug and the other one looks like a little plug with an X on it. If I hit the one with the X on it, that disconnects. Disconnect. And then I'm going to connect again. This time I'm going to leave it set to Windows authentication. I'm going to connect with Windows authentication. What did I do right there? Connected to the same database, but what are my privileges now? Now I'm the admin. Now I own everything. So I'm going to go to databases. Go to APDB, the one I messed up. I'm going to right click him. And I'm just going to say delete. This is a bad thing to do. Say OK. And he's gone. I can do that because had I tried to do that as SW Smith, I can't delete a database as SW Smith. 
Now, I have one more thing to do. Do you remember where, if I go to properties, do you remember that, um, the files, owner, There was uh, one place where, where I had the, where's my files? General files there under files. <clears throat> Remember this, uh, this path to the file, C colon program files, SQL server and all that jazz. Okay, now this is kind of a, I, I've got to go to C drive. I've got to go to program files. I've got to go to SQL server. No, it's actually, it's, 86, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, SQL Express. Well, Microsoft SQL Server, there it is, SQL Express, MS SQL, data, long, okay, I say continue, that says I have to be the administrator, and I have to delete the, okay, I guess, I guess it got it since I deleted it, but I would have to delete the AP underscore DB files if I had them here. Here's the scratch DB, um, so it looks like they're all done. Now I am ready to come back in. I'm going to disconnect, reconnect, this time with server authentication. I'm going to say SW Smith. And you can say remember password if you want to. It's your business. I wouldn't do that on a production machine. Okay, under databases now, because I goofed it up, I'm going to say new database. I'm going to connect that to so it's going to be AP underscore DB. And the owner this time, I'm going to make be SW Smith. Ah, crap. It is possible to be connected twice. Notice I have one connection up here as SW Smith. This one is the, is the uh, server. So I'm gonna go to this one, new database, get it right the first time, AP underscore DB, owner, SW Smith. Name of the game, get it right the first time, so. Now I have two databases. This one I'm ready to disconnect, and this one is SW Smith. Okay, so I finally got it straightened out. The name of the game is watch what you're doing. Be careful. It's a whole lot easier to do it right the first time, be double check, measure twice, cut once kind of a thing in, in database. It is not friendly. You don't have a nice, easy little undo button on these things. Okay, um, there's one more, one more file I sent you. Um, let's see, that was uh, createap.sql. Does anybody have that file offhand? I know I have it here, but I'm on a different computer. I usually have my own. I think I've got it on my flash drive. If you don't have it, I can I'll give it to you.
Well, it's what's known as lack of documentation. Um, okay, I, know, I do know where it is. In your canvas, under canvas, under module two, page, let's see, page five, uh, module two, module two, page five, not 5A, page five, um, you will find a link there to this file, create ap, uh, create underscore ap dot sql. I'm going to, uh, I want to save that. Open it. Okay, this is a SQL file. Now where's my save, download. I say download here, show in folder. <clears throat> okay, I'll give you this file. If you don't have it, it's there on, uh, it's in module two, page five. Module two, page five is a link that will let you download this create AP underscore DB. Okay. SQL dot SQL. This is an SQL program. I'm going to go to my SQL. My SQL management studio file open. A file. Control O will also open it. I'm going to navigate. I put mine on the desktop. Create AP. Wherever you put yours, you may put it any place you want. I suggest on your drive. Good place for it. You want to take this home, but you can get it from Canvas. Module 2, page 5. There's a link on there to download it. It will open. Now let's take a look at it. This is an this is our first SQL program. And by the time you get out of this class, you will be able to read this program and see what it does. Um, I'm not going to bother going through it. It is about 800 lines of code. Yes, I wrote it. Um, it creates the uh, AP database. So it, it's going to make it for us. And it will do it very quickly. I want to keep this code around because if I hose my AP underscore DB database, this will fix it. All I have to do is run this. And it wipes out any changes, puts it back like, so it's kind of like a, a, a reset, soft reset to your, your database. What it does, it drops the tables, then it creates the tables, creates them, creating the tables, then it inserts data into the table. So you don't need to worry about it. If I'm going a little too fast for you to read, which I probably am, that's okay. I'm just pointing out that this is the code that we are going to be studying and everything that's in here, we're going to do before we get to the end of the class. So when I am ready, do you have it open yet? Yes? 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 I'm looking for yeses. Okay. No. Yes. No. Yes, it's no. Okay. What? 
yeah. Um, okay, let me let me go let me go through it again. Uh, basically, you're going to go to um, under modules. Under modules, you're going to go to come on close module two. Module two, page five, create the accounts payable database. Open him. And in here, you will find a link. Let's go about halfway down the page. Create underscore AP SQL. That's the link you want. Don't save it as, as HTML. You want that text, it's a text file. It'll open just fine in Notepad. You want to copy that link someplace. I put mine on the desktop. It's a perfectly good place as any. Okay. You can put yours any place you want to. Back here. Now I have downloaded the file I want. I've got it someplace. I'm not going to tell you where, but someplace. Not rude. Um, I'm going to say, I can do control O if I want to, or I can say file, open, file, let's see, control O, open a file, find my file, double click him, he's opened. Okay, I'm going to now go execute. This is a query, this is a program, he is, he will execute, execute. You should not get any error messages. About three seconds later, it should have run. We are now configured. Hmm. Or might be, maybe. I can test it. To test it, I'm gonna write my first SQL program. I'm going to go new query, new query. Everything okay? That doesn't look like okay. Well, let me, uh, let me get everybody caught up and we'll wrap up here in just a minute. What time is it anyway? 11 what? Okay. I will generally wrap up by noon. Um, however, I, uh, I stay up to each doesn't always stay until two, but I'm not going to leave right at that o'clock. The class will be over by about 11.50 in general. You can count on um, Hi there for an hour. Well, yeah, that's a very exciting So the applause is success. No, that's it. Just like let's try program. Um, and let's see. I could, you know, I could write in Notepad. If I, I can write SQL in Notepad just fine, Notepad++, any Notepad++ users, Notepad++, great. It's, it's got SQL. If you set your language to SQL, it'll do all the syntax highlighting for you. Um, for people who like stuff. Uh, I'm gonna say a new query. So I now have a new query. See, no, notice I have two of them open up here. This one. Okay. I'm gonna run my font up a little bit. My first line of every one I write is my name. 
if you do a dash dash, that is the universal SQL comment. In C or Java, it would be a slash slash. Well, in SQL, it's a dash dash. It works the same way from there to the end of the line. By the way, the standard C comment of slash splat, asterisk, closing with a splat slash also works in SQL. Most of the time we use the dash dash, but you can use either one, okay? The first line is always your name. The first executable line, use AP underscore DB. Why? I told, I'm telling you now to select the, the, uh, the accounts payable database. This is how you do it. Every line, every computer program that you turn in must select the database. It won't always be APDB. It might be ScratchDB, but it has to say which one. Now, remember that the default is ScratchDB. That's the default database. So if you don't say anything, you end up in Scratch. But I want you to say it. It's important that you Make sure that you say it each time. If you just take the default, I'm not gonna be happy. Okay, now I'm gonna write my code, select, select uh, what, the vendor. SQL is not case sensitive. SQL does uppercase, lowercase, do not matter, yes. Press enter. Okay. Yeah, SQL is not case sensitive. SQL is open format. You can, you can write it all on one line. I won't be happy if you do. Um, you can, all lowercase, all uppercase. The general way of doing it, the general formatting convention is in SQL, we will write reserved words. Reserved words are the ones that are blue. Use select. Okay. Don't count on that all the time, but it's usually true. They go in all uppercase. Select is all uppercase. Would it work in lowercase? Yes, but the convention is, and we're going to follow that, to write it in uppercase. After that, I use a camel case. What's camel case? There's two ways of thinking and identifiers. C A M E L Camel case. The other way of writing identifiers is with an underscore. Either of them will work. You will see them both used. My preference for SQL is camel case. Doesn't mean you have to. If you're an underscore person, well, you just are. You know, that's the way you were born, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't have a strong, mine are, mine are all done using the camel case. So this, this you know, where you have the, uppercase breaking the two words. Vendor name, from is a reserved word. Vendors is the table. So I have a table named vendors and vendors is a field called vendor name. That's enough, that's all I have to say. I'm just going to stop there. And since I'm happy, I'm gonna to say to execute and notice that I got 122 rows returned. And these are all the names of my vendors. I could find all of the vendors that I had from vendors where I have another field called vendor state equals 
SQL always uses single quotes. If you see me writing double quotes in SQL, somebody raise your hand and say, Dr. Smith, you're writing Java again. Um, because I, well, I don't have a Java class this semester, but sometimes I'll have SQL and Java. And I can't, you know, double quote and single quote. SQL is always single quote is equal to CA. And now I will see all of my vendors who live in California. Now, if you have a bunch of stuff here written and you get, you know, several select statements, it is possible to highlight it like this and say execute, and then it will execute only the highlighted part. As long as you have done the use AP underscore DB at some point in the past, it's going to stay on AP underscore DB until you change it, okay? Or exit, exit and come back in. And I'm just about done for today. You will need your book. Um, it usually takes me a lot longer to get through this than I expect. I always expect, I always budget about an hour to do the install, but I never get done with it in an hour. Um, I will be here. <clears throat> I'm not leaving. I usually take a break about now, but I don't leave right now. And this means you don't have to leave right now. Uh, you're welcome to stay and, and work, on, work on your code. Uh, we will begin with module three. Um, module three, by the way, I jump ahead in the book because the book starts talking about data being in the table before it has done the create table commands. This drives me nuts. Um, I have to create a table before I can start selecting data from the table, right? So what the, the textbooks do, and your uh, Shelley Cashman textbook from um, ITSW 1307 was terrible about that. It would just start throwing data at the table and it would automatically just buy, use a default table or something. Um, I'm gonna do the table first, so I'm gonna create the tables first. That means I'm jumping ahead about to chapter seven when we're going to create tables and then we're going to back up and start putting data into them so after we get through modules three and four then we'll be back in sync with the book so it, it says on the on the um um modules under modules so the module one well that's pretty easy my, it's got my picture. Module two, we've already installed, we've installed and configured everything. Module three says non sequitur in text. That means they're not in order. It's not, uh, it's not chapter three. Okay, I jump ahead and same thing with module four. Then I back up on module five, I back up and start back at the beginning of the textbook. And I give you enough stuff to where you can know how tables are how the tables get created. Okay. Questions? Everybody do the do the quiz. Yes. No. Yeah, I'll be happy to look at code. Question. I'm sorry. Grades are weighted the on they come out to approximately 1,000 points. So a grade of 40% or 40 points on, on an assignment, for example, would that would be 4% of the grade roughly. Um, I sometimes will mess with it a little bit, but not much. So there are about 1,000 points. The tests are about 100 points. So that's 10, the tests are about 10%. The individual assignments are about 4% each. Some of them are weighted a little less and some of them more depending on how hard I think they are. Okay, so think of it roughly as, um, I guess I should have just instead of saying 40 points, I should have just said four, but knock off the zero and call that the percent. 
knock off one zero. Roughly. I tend to, if you miss a, a grade or something, I tend to try to have a time towards the end where I will open it up and I will take some of the missed assignments, but don't, don't dump them all on me. <laughs> other questions? I saw some other hand. Yes. Fridays. Yeah. My office hours are, well, I'm in them now. Um, okay. I will usually have the uh, Zoom on. I'll probably, um, what I'll probably do will be I'll bounce the Zoom and start it recording. Then I'll connect back again and leave it turned on where if you pick up your microphone at home and talk, I should hear you anywhere in the room. I'll get that set up this afternoon where I can hear you from home if you, if you turn on your mic. Others? I'm going to go ahead and end the recording now. Okay, questions uh, online people? Do I have anybody left online? Okay. Chris, I guess if you've got a question, you can send it in the... Uh, in and the canvas may all be fine. Uh, if you see anything, if you run across anything that is locked and you think it shouldn't be, I haven't necessarily unlocked module three yet, but module two should be unlocked. If anything shows as locked, get on my email and pester me. Unlock that thing. Um, I'm going to now, I'm going to bounce the uh, chat, uh, excuse me, the uh, Zoom, so that I can start it processing. It's kind of a long process when I get a long recording like this. So I need to, I need to bounce Zoom at this time. So uh, goodbye, Chris, I'm ending the meeting.